Thank you for joining us today. My name is Param Iftikhari, a co-founder and a senior fellow at the Institute for Critical Infrastructure Technology. I'm joined today by Jerry Davis, an ICIT fellow and the CIO for NASA Ames Research. Jerry, it's great to have you here today. Uh, thanks, and glad to be here. Absolutely. So we're here to talk about um, next generation cybersecurity technologies and the threats that are facing critical infrastructure sectors, including the government. Um, so we're going to start with um, NASA Ames. Uh, obviously, all of NASA's cyber um, responsibilities come out of your organization. Um, and given the fact that you have such top researchers in a number of different verticals, you have a very unique perspective on the threats facing different sectors uh, across the country. So I was wondering, what do you view uh, as the biggest threats that are um, facing organizations and sectors as a whole, um, uh, and what are some of the things that organizations are doing to overcome those threats? Yeah, so today, you know, I, I, if you look back a, a, a number of years ago, and even till recently, there is a, a tremendous focus uh, around the threats around uh, loss of uh, sensitive information, particularly around personally identifiable information. Mm -hmm. Um, as we're moving forward <clears throat> um, and looking more at kind of the criminal enterprise and, and, and the threats uh, around that, uh, around those attack surfaces, it's now we've seen a, a major shift around uh, kind of the espionage um, a threat that's out there. So, you know, from a NASA perspective, we have a lot of high-end technology that we, yep. that we deal with, um, technology that uh, is not quite ready for public consumption um, mm -hmm. or things that uh, we wouldn't want uh, anybody to have, uh, you know, yet that's not ready for public consumption. Um, so that the threat of espionage, uh, threat actors from nation state sponsored attackers um, are something that we're, we're definitely concerned about um, because of the stealthiness of the, the tactics that they employ and um, their uh, capability to exploit systems. I think uh, looking forward uh, at, at the rest of the, uh, the, the nation and uh, folks who are in this the same um, uh, maybe uh, type of work stream that we're into and, and things that we do, uh, that's, those are some of the same things that they should be looking for, is this new threat around espionage mm. um, and uh, the theft of proprietary information and not just so much uh, personal identifiable information anymore. Yeah, absolutely. So drilling down a bit, NASA Ames has a unique responsibility to uh, protect the myriad of embedded systems and shuttles yes. and satellites. So what specific technologies and strategies um, are you deploying uh, and researching within NASA Ames to uh, combat those threats that you were just talking about? All right. So, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, across the spectrum today, I think everyone is starting to realize that cyber physical is becoming a real concern. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, at NASA Ames, yeah, you're absolutely right. We fly uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, uh, unmanned aerial systems. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with uh, partners on um, e-enabled or internet-enabled uh, cars and things of that nature that have these uh, uh, autonomous systems uh, involved. <clears throat> uh, from, a, from, a, from a protection standpoint, uh, one of the things that we're doing is we actually have a proposal on the table that's called Griffin X uh, Cybersecurity Fusion and Training Center. Um, and it, it's, it's a holistic look from across the board from um, from the technology that's employed to training and education to research development, test and evaluation around critical infrastructure technologies and protection schemes uh, from uh, communities of interest from around the nation. This is, includes academia, other government <coughs> agencies, uh, Department of Defense, and private industry, a forum to come together and actually do real applied sciences yeah. as it applies to cybersecurity and cyber physical environments. That's a proposal that's on the table right now, but we're getting a lot of favorable support on it, and it's something that we look forward to kind of start pushing forward in uh, calendar year 16. So, so uh, talking more about Griffin X, why do you think it's so critical to have um, uh, forums and programs and initiatives like this, because you know, you're not the only one doing this, but it's, it's critical that we have more of these. Why is, why is it um, important to have um, opportunities for uh, industry and government and academia to all come together and collaborate, and what are some of the outcomes that you're hoping to receive, not just for NASA Ames, but also for um, the country as a whole, other agencies and, and different sectors? Yeah, the, the, the necessity of it uh, is driven purely by the name itself, critical infrastructure. Right. So, so, so these are you know yeah. environments that the that uh, you go all the way from uh, uh, an organization like NASA, which has 
a microcosm of, of critical infrastructure, the 16 critical infrastructure sectors mm -hmm. at each of the NASA centers, and you boil that up to nationally, uh, these are things that are absolutely imperative to national security, uh, economic stability uh, of the nation. So it's imperative that all these community of interest get together because we're, we're all trying to uh, get to a common place, a common goal of ensuring resiliency around critical infrastructure. But we need a, we need a form is these activities are taking place, but they're kind of in stovepipes yeah. um, environment, and the information is not getting out, the practices aren't getting out, um, so it's important, which is why we're pushing for an effort like Griffin X to bring everybody uh, together. The, the importance of this uh, can't be overstated. Yeah. Um, we, as, uh, as a nation, um, are wholly dependent, as individuals, as a nation, wholly dependent um, our day-to-day -day lives on critical infrastructure. When we go out and you go to the banks, you go to uh, the gas station to pump fuel in your car. I always say that to myself, what would you do when you go to the gas station you put your credit card in there and not only does your credit card not work, yeah. but the pump doesn't work. Yeah. Um, or your car is driving off the side of the road by itself. <laughs> um, safety, uh, the cyber physical branching over to the safety side now having a huge impact on safety yeah. is what is a critical area and I think that's why the importance of having these forms these forms to get ahead of these issues. This is an opportunity to finally get ahead of uh, all the issues we see around cybersecurity and critical infrastructure protection. Yeah, couldn't agree more. So um, on that note, what recommendations do you have for other federal agencies um, as they're developing their 2016 uh, strategies and programs and initiatives and, and starting to assess different types of technologies. Um, what are you doing um, for your organization and for all of NASA that others can learn from? Um, you know, I, I think one of the things we, we need to do uh, in any organization, uh, we've waited too long to get into uh, research and development. Hmm. Um, and I think some of the reason why is it, it tends to be cost prohibitive yeah. for a lot of organizations. Um, but I would say that organizations need to look to start investing more in research and development for cybersecurity um, uh, protection around critical infrastructure. I think also one of the other things in, in going forward in, in uh, 16 and their plans, uh, we should really take a really hard look as, as your risk management scheme, a hard look at threat management and threat intelligence. I think those are absolutely one of the key things to building a solid risk management program is really understanding the threat, understanding yeah. who the threat actors are, and more importantly, what are they going after? If you understand what they're going off after and it applies to your environment, that helps you better select the right technologies and Absolutely. tools to defend your assets that, that, uh, that may be particularly uh, targeted. I think also, and finally, uh, getting involved in the um, information sharing aspects between different communities of interest. Because at the end of the day, whether you're running um, uh, critical infrastructure uh, environment around energy, or whether it's healthcare, or whether it's information technology or government in general, when you get down to the lower levels, that, that bottom infrastructure is kind of all, the, tends to be all yeah. the same, right? So sharing of that information in an environment where we can do that, um, I think is highly important for organizations in their program going forward in FY16. Yeah. I think the more people talk to one another um, from uh, who they would have perceived as not having anything in common with, they actually sit down in a room and they say, you know what, I may be energy, I may be water sector, I may be financial sector, we're facing the same problem, the same challenges. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's that, that the added layer of knowledge that you pointed out which is what allows them to find the unique solutions that they need to protect their individual uh, environment and circumstances. That's right. What about from a, the vendor perspective? What, what recommendations can you give to the technology community um, to better meet the needs of agencies and how can they better support um, the challenges that you're up against? Okay, so um, if you're talking about, let's say, common IT from a vendor perspective, just common um, everyday off-the-shelf IT commodity products, um, building in good security controls so we don't have to do it on the back end. <laughs> you know, I think taking a hard look at the products uh, that you're like putting out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that take on a hard look at the products that they're creating, making sure that there's adequate granular security controls in there. I think from the security uh, vendor community um, is really understanding the the customer side of the house. Yeah. Often enough, you know, I deal with a lot of a, a lot of vendors over the years. I've been in cybersecurity, and sometimes they just don't understand 
um, the customer, understand me, what I, exactly what I do, and the threats that I'm dealing with. Sometimes they, they like to kind of paint a broad brush you know, uh, across all the environments yeah. and say, this technology will work in any environment. Well, it's not necessarily true. So I think the vendor community needs to really understand their, their customer. Um, and that will go a long way for them getting the right technologies to their customers um, and their environment to better defend their, their environments. Absolutely. So as we wind down the conversation, um, you've been a fellow of the Institute now for several months. You've contributed to our briefs. You've obviously looked at the research that we put out and you just spent a couple of days having um, nearly a, just about a dozen yeah. meetings. With, <laughs> I, you're probably tired <laughs> uh, with the uh, House and on the House side, the Senate side, with some committees and caucuses. I'm wondering, from your perspective, what is the value that, that you personally and you think that the government receives from getting involved in a think tank and, and being able to provide objective, nonpartisan mm -hmm. advising and education on issues um, and also have an opportunity to collaborate with the other fellows who are either um, agency folks or, you know, the experts in different industry niches across the technology spectrum. Right. Uh, what, what's the benefit that you're gaining from this? It has been, you know, it, it, it is really hard to sum up, but it has been nothing short of phenomenal. Fantastic. Um, and I say that uh, in, in all honesty. Um, the access to uh, the, the legislators up on the Hill um, that I've had over the last couple days um, is something that would not, and just a sheer number of people who have access to over the last couple of days by, by um, going through facilitated by the Institute, uh, is something that if I had done on my own, um, would have taken probably years, yeah. you know, months to years to get access to that many people in a short, a short amount of time. And not just anybody, but people who, um, who are actually doers and can make decisions and make things happen. Yep. It's extremely valuable to anyone, particularly in a government agency where things tend to move very slow, very bureaucratic, um, and a lot of hoops to jump through. By having uh, the institute there to help facilitate, uh, it's such a, a, a supportive environment in that you're not coming in, you're not trying to sell anything. Yep. Um, there's, uh, there's, uh, the vested interest is nationally. There's a national vested interest. The vested interest is in the government and not trying to sell a particular product necessarily, or um, you know, you're not looking at bottom line and profits yeah. and that sort of thing. So, so that is, I think, very helpful on the legislative side of the house. Absolutely. Um, and it helps them to, uh, you have basically what I like to call like a white hat person in a room uh, who has no vested interest other than to make the government better. And that's a, a, a tremendous and complementary to the federal government or members who uh, other fellows as part of the institute and something that institute does that is just absolutely invaluable. And I've never been part of anything like this before, but I've had a, spent a lot of time on the Hill over the years in various government agencies, um, just for small initiatives and that sort of thing. And it took weeks to months yeah. to set up meetings and try to meet with people who could actually do something. So to uh, shortcut that and be able to short circuit that route and do it in a matter of hours, um, you you literally can't put a, a value on that. It's just yeah. priceless. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Um, we're really proud of um, the trusted relationships that we built on the Hill and the, the advisor role that we've taken. And it's due to thought leadership from folks like yourself. So we're happy to have sure. you on board. It's been Absolutely. wonderful. It's Thank pleasure. you for your time today. Um, if any of the viewers would like to uh, get in touch with NASA Ames, you can always reach out to the Institute and we'll be happy to make that connection. Um, thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you.